we've now seen what happens when we create an MVC project using the MVC template. We get a lot of infrastructure and a lot of classes, and that's great. I encourage you to take a look at those and examine the techniques that are used. However, if you're starting your own project, there may be things in there that you really don't need that add weight to your application. So from now on in this course, we're going to start a little bit more bare bones. So we'll start with a new project, and we'll select Web and ASP.NET as before. And we'll name this project First MVC. And in this case, we're going to use the empty project, but we'll add the references to MVC. That will give us the infrastructure we need to actually create an MVC project, but it won't come with all the authentication and the templates and all the other things that come from an MVC template project. We'll create that project, and you can see it's created a lot quicker. And you also note that the controllers, models, are both empty, and views just gives us a web config in the view folder. So we have an empty project, but in our references, we have all the references that we need to MVC and Razor, web extensions, and web pages Razor, all the various things we need for the MVC infrastructure. So now we'll build a fairly simple little web application. I've pre created the model controller and view classes. And I'll add them into the project at this point, and we'll take a look at what we have. We'll start with the models. I'm going to add some existing items that I've created, and we're going to focus on the orders. We do need customers, however, so we're going to have a model for that as well. So let's take a look at that order model. It's a very simple class. It just stores order ID, customer ID, and other associated properties with the order. The customer model is also very simple. You'll note that neither one of these objects actually do anything. They're just effectively storage objects. It's not necessarily required, but it's often the case. In the Views folder, I'm going to create two subfolders. We're going to add a new folder, and the first one we're going to call Orders. And that will contain all the views that we use for our order area. And we're going to have basically a grid for orders and an edit page. The second folder we're going to add is going to be called Shared. In that, we use shared views. And shared views are similar to the old ASP.NET master page. So all of the views within the views folder can use a shared view. So now I'll add in my pre-configured files. And I'm going to have an edit view and an index view. And in the shared, I'm going to have a layout view. So let's take a look at that index view first. At the top of it, we declare what model we're going to use. This is the data model that provides the data for the view. And we're going to use the order model that we created. The at symbol, by the way, in front of the model indicates that it's a razor statement, just like the at symbol in front of the view bag statement indicates that it's a razor statement. And then we get into a little bit more conventional HTML, but you'll note that we still have a lot of razor statements. So we create a header that just says index, and then we have an action link for creating a new order. An action link renders essentially as an A tag. Through the routing, it will point the A tag to the controller method. And then we have a small table. And the header will have the display name for the different columns for the order ID, customer ID, and quantity. And we use something called an HTML display name for method. That's going to create essentially a label. In the next area, we build the body of the table. So for each one of the items in our model, so that's for each one of our orders, we're going to create HTML display for, and we'll be displaying the value for the order ID, customer ID, the order quantity, the price, and the item. And then on our last cell, we'll have action links for editing, for details, and delete. We're actually only going to do the edit for now, but you'll get the idea. And then we complete our table. Now you'll note that this structure is within a for each. Again, a razor statement that loops through all the orders in the model. The shared view gives us a lot of infrastructure that would be shared across all views. So we get things like the style sheets and any JavaScript files that we need. When we get into the body, we have a little bit of a header area that provides a link back to the home page. And then our actual view is rendered by the at render body statement. And finally, we have a little bit of a footer. So if you've worked in ASP.NET and used master pages, you can see a little bit of commonality with this. So those are our views. Now let's take a look at our controller. So once again, we'll add in the pre-existing file for the controller. We're going to have an orders controller. And the most important method we have 
is this index method. That lines up with the name index for our view. And this gets called when the page is initially rendered. And what we want to do is create a list of orders. Now in this case, I'm just going to create some demo data. So our list of order model objects is just created by this method for get order demo models, which essentially is just demo data. I'm also going to create a list that we use in the edit page, and that's for our customers. And that will show up in a drop-down list for the customer names. We also have this little bit where we're storing our order collection in the session. That normally wouldn't be the case, but we need that as well for the edits. Normally, you would be dealing with a database behind the scenes. And finally, we return a view passing in the order model. Now, the type of this model has to match up exactly with the model that we've called out at the top of our view. So we have an I enumerable, and a list is indeed I enumerable. But we have order model objects in our list. And we have order model objects in our I enumerable that the view uses. If those don't match up, it'll blow up immediately. So we've got some methods that create the demo data, and then we've got a method that sets up the customer list, and we're going through that demo data and creating list items. And finally, we have an edit method. The edit method is called when the link to show the edit screen is clicked. So we'll look for the specific order that they want to edit, and we'll also set up a customer list for the edit screen. Finally, when that edit is done, we would save the data. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff, so let's see how it runs. You can't just run an MVC project straight out of the chute like that, because it doesn't know what the default page is. So that's when we get into routing. But this has been a really long lesson, so we're going to leave you hanging on that one. And we'll get into routing and show you how to deal with that in our next.